Greetings all, this is Rick Levine with your December astrological forecast. I am recording this a bit earlier than normal because as many of you know, I'm heading off to India uh, on December 2nd in order to teach a 10-day retreat uh, in Goa. And for that reason, I am recording this early in the day on Tuesday, November 28th, with the moon still in Gemini. That should be fun to catch that energy. Uh, For those of you who are Patreon members, that means that my December mid-month update uh, will be done from India, and I won't be able to record that until my teaching is done, and so it won't be recorded until the December 16th, and uh, so you won't get that until around the 17th um, of December. Also, For those of you who are Patreon members, subscribers at the planetary level or higher, I will be hosting a New Year's Eve Zoom party from India, and uh, obviously that'll be on New Year's Eve, and you'll get more information on that. So if you have no New Year's Eve plans and you want to drop by, that should be a, a, a bit of fun couple of other very quick announcements. I'd like to encourage you all to go to my website, which is really just a placeholder page still right now. And that's at www.ricklevineastrologer, all one word, ricklevineastrologer.com, and sign up for my email list, and I um, would appreciate that. That, of course, will keep you informed not only about my YouTube postings, uh, but you'll get some other astrological updates uh, also. So that is at ricklevineastrologer.com, and thanks for doing that. I also want to remind all you that I will be doing the live stream Astrology Night from Soul Food Bookstore, from a Soul Food Coffee House, that is, um, in Redmond, Washington, and that will be on Friday night, December 1st. And for those of you in the neighborhood, please stop by. And for those of you who are not, it will be live streamed as usual, uh, starting at 6.30 p.m., and that's Pacific Time, and uh, on, the, on my YouTube channel. And you can find that by going to youtube.com slash at Rick Levine. That's at sign Rick Levine, youtube.com slash at Rick Levine. And um, I'll see many of you online for, for that. One last reminder or announcement, and that is that uh, on Febu- in February, uh, the weekend of the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, I will be at the Conscious Life Expo at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles. For those of you who are in that neighborhood, this is an amazing event. It attracts thousands of people. Um, Astrology is a part of a larger scenario of kind of cosmic and new age things. It's a very special event, and I encourage you to uh, look online. I'll have more information on that next month, Um, but I will be there, and I'll be doing, um, I'll be on a couple of panels and doing a workshop and doing a post-conference event on on the Monday after, and so that is the Conscious Life Expo in the uh, second weekend of February, and um, that's pretty much it. So uh, with no further ado, let's jump in. I want to say that that as I've looked over the month of December, it, you know, it's, it's certainly the holiday season, of course, and that has its own um, lovely, wonderful things and its trappings, of course, also. But I think it's important to understand that from an astrological standpoint, Uh, there's not a lot new happening. And why do I say that? Well, first of all, Mercury is retrograde for much of the month, and it is moving through its shadow already on the first of the month. We'll drill down on that in just a few minutes. Um, But that kind of sets the tone for this kind of pulling in energy and kind of revisiting some of the recent history that we've had this month. The other thing about 
the month of December is that we're kind of at the tail end of this rather significant retrograde period that we've been in. You know, all the outer planets go retrograde, many of them for as much as four or five months during the year, every year. But it's rare for them all to be clustered together, close enough together, um, that they are all retrograde at the same time. And of course, we have Pluto at the end of Capricorn, almost back to Aquarius. It'll land there back in January. But from that um, late Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, where Saturn and Neptune are, Chiron and Aries, and Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus, all the outer planets are contained um, within a uh, well within the Earth trine, within the um, Capricorn to Taurus part of the cycle, and for that reason, because the retrograde phenomenon with the outer planets is their relationship with the sun, and for that reason, they've all been retrograde at the same time. Now, they've begun to come out of retrograde um, already. Uh, Pluto was the first of the outer planets to move out of retrograde, um, followed by uh, Saturn uh, last month uh, at the beginning of, um, of November, and, um, and now we have in, uh, um, and, and, uh, followed by Saturn, followed by Saturn at the beginning of November. And now in December, we have Neptune turning direct on December 6th. We have Chiron turning direct on December 26th. And we have Jupiter turning direct on December 30th. What this means, and Uranus um, is still retrograde, it doesn't turn direct until January. Now, the planets that are moving direct, which already, which are Saturn and Pluto, are moving direct rather slowly. And I just want to kind of bring home the idea, I've been talking about this for a few months now, and, and, and December is really the last of the month of no progress, or of little progress that's made on a larger cultural um, level. Because if we look at the outer planets, we have Pluto on December 1st at 28 and a half degrees of Capricorn. And by, by the end of December, beginning of January, it's only at 29 degrees, um, maybe 29 and a third degrees of Capricorn. And then by February, it's moved into, um, into Aquarius. So Pluto going back all the way to November, um, the beginning of November to the beginning of February is basically within one and a half degrees of, of, of its for that entire time. Neptune is even tighter because Neptune um, was at 25 and a quarter degrees back at the beginning of Neptune, and it's at 25 degrees now at the beginning of December. It's actually 24 degrees and 54 minutes, but for all practical purposes at 25 degrees. At the um, beginning of January, it's still within 10 minutes of arc, within one-sixth of a degree. Neptune ain't moving at all, um, even though um, it technically um, is turning direct. Um, it's still at 25 degrees of Pisces at the beginning of January, and it's still not even to 26 degrees of Pisces by the beginning of February. So we're not getting a lot of movement on these outer planets. Um, Uranus also, um, you know, is... Uh, at 20 degrees, 20 and a third degrees, 20 degrees, 20 minutes on December 1st. And it's only at 19 degrees because it's still going um, retrograde for all of this month. And even though it turns direct by the beginning of February, it's barely moved at all one degree in that period of, of two months. Saturn moving a little bit faster, but not much. Remember, Saturn had retrograded back to zero degrees of Pisces, about zero and a half degrees, zero degrees, 30 minutes. Um, 
back on November 1st, and it's at one degree of Pisces now as we open up the month of December. It's at three degrees of Pisces by the end of the month, so it moves two degrees all month, and then it picks up a little more speed. It moves about three and a half degrees during January, and it picks up even more speed, and it moves nearly four degrees during February. Um, and of course, Jupiter is in the same ballpark because Jupiter is also retrograde until the end of December. So we start December with Jupiter retrograde at seven degrees of Taurus. And, um, and by the beginning of January, it's um, only at five and a half degrees of Taurus. It's barely moved a degree and a half all month. So the reason why I wanted to step through that is this is very unusual because the inner planets have all been moving forward, kind of stirring th things up and kind of making the noise as if we're moving forward, but the outer planets have all still been retrograde um, or just turning direct. And we're seeing more of that in the month of December. So there may be some substantial inching forward, but it's not happening very fast at all. All. And of course, on top of that, we have Mercury. Mercury, and I want to spend a few minutes now talking about Mercury, um, and we'll do, dig down into that a little bit deeper as the month unfolds. But so Mercury turns retrograde on December 12th, and it does that at about eight and a half degrees of Capricorn. Mercury on December 1st is at zero degrees of Capricorn. Mercury moves into Capricorn at 6.30 a.m., 6.31 actually, um, a.m. And of course, all times that I give you, whether I'm here in Seattle or even in India as this is unfolding, um, where the time zone is 12 and a half hours, it's a half hour time zone, it's 12 and a half hours ahead of Seattle time. But all times in this presentation will be Pacific time. So if you're on the East Coast of the United States, you need to add three hours and adjust anywhere else you may be on the planet. So Mercury moves into Capricorn at 6.31 a.m. on the 1st of December. Mercury turns retrograde on the 12th at 8.5 degrees of Capricorn. And then it goes retrograde um, uh, all month until it turns direct on January 1st. So from the 12th of December all the way through the end of the year, Mercury is moving apparently backwards, covering territory that it's already um, moved through, and it turns direct at 22 degrees of Sagittarius on, um, on, on December 1st. That 22 degrees and 11 minutes of Sagittarius is important because from the time that Mercury turns retrograde, having gone all the way into Capricorn and reached eight and a half degrees, until the time it backs up all the way to 22 degrees back in Sagittarius, that area is area in the sky that Mercury will move through direct, then turn retrograde, move through again, and then move direct again a third and final time. We call that the shadow of Mercury. It's the period, it's the space in the sky where Mercury covers that territory three times, once direct, once retrograde, once direct. And it basically moved Mercury, moved um, into the 22 degrees and 11 minutes of Sagittarius on November 25th. What that means is that as we begin the month, we're already five days into Mercury moving through that area of sky that will be repeated, which means that those things which have been intellectually mercurially influenced over the per first few days prior to the first few days of the month of December, and certainly for the first couple of weeks of December until Mercury turns direct on December 12th, that all of those events are not a done deal. They're basically um, setting up that which will then be revisited when Mercury turns retrograde and then revisited a third, third and final time when it goes direct. So here's the important things to understand. Mercury entered its shadow um, at 22 degrees and 11 minutes of Sagittarius on November 25th. Mercury moved into Capricorn 
on December 1st, or I should say moves into Capricorn on December 1st, because that's still a few days ahead of when I'm recording this. Mercury turns retrograde on December 12th at about eight and a half degrees of Capricorn. On December 22nd, Mercury backs out of Capricorn and back into Sagittarius in the evening of December 22nd. Mercury then turns direct on January uh, 1st, also in the evening, and then it moves out of Sagittarius and back into Capricorn on January 13th in the morning. And it finally leaves its shadow, meaning that it moves through that eight degrees, eight and a half degrees, or eight degrees Capricorn, and um, and and about eleven minutes. It does that in the evening of January twentieth. So roughly the period of time from November twenty fifth to January twentieth, we have Mercury kind of in that shadow area, even though it's only retrograde from December 12th to the to the 1st. Now, of course, retrograde Mercuries are um, often feared and kind of joked about in astrology, but they're really an important thing to observe. There's nothing wrong with a Mercury retrograde. It's perfectly natural. It does it three times a year or so. The thing is, is that when Mercury or any planet is retrograde, it's closer to Earth, and so the energy feels like it's stirring up things. And it's also moving over that area of the sky that it looks like it's been before. So it makes aspects with planets in our own charts, in our own natal charts. Um, If it makes an aspect while it's in the shadow, it'll do that one, two, three times, taking an event that normally happens once a year, and it makes it into a, it stretches it out into a longer period of time. Now, when Mercury changes direction, like any planet stationing, um, like um, Neptune will station on December 6th, and Chiron on the 26th, and Jupiter on the 30th, when a planet stations retrograde or direct, it has to slow down to change directions. We can say that Mercury technically, um, it, it technically turns retrograde at 11.09 p.m. on December 12th. But that is really an almost useless piece of knowledge. It's too, too detailed because Mercury is barely moving at all for that entire day and the day after. It's, it's not even noticeable, and it takes a few days for it to actually um, gain speed after it does change direction. The reason why this is important is that when Mercury is moving retrograde, it's making aspects that it already made, not only with our own chart, but also with planets in the sky. In other words, with the real-time planets. For example, Mercury made a square to Neptune right around the new moon um, back on November 27th or 28th, depending upon where you are. So that Mercury square Neptune is a bit of um, imagination creeping into words, but it's also a bit of um, lack of clarity because Mercury likes clarity and Neptune likes lack of clarity. Now, the thing that's intriguing, though, is that retrograde Mercury will make that square again to Neptune on uh, December 26, on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, and then it will retro. Uh, th- then it will station and turn direct, and it will make its third and final square with Neptune on January 8th. So that period from um, around Christmas until the end of the first week of January, we're going to get Mercury close to that square to Neptune again, and we may see things that occurred back at the end of November when Mercury squared Neptune. We may see those those things stirred up again. Now, we get a bit of a reality check when Mercury makes a sextile with Saturn on December 2nd, but because of its retrograde, it will repeat that again um, on December 21st, and it will repeat it a third and final time on January 18th. Again, we can make connections between things that happen on those dates, and yet that reality check might be important, and it might be increasingly important because Um, Mercury also makes a square and a half with Uranus on 
December 6th. And Mercury half square to Uranus is like unusual breakthroughs in communication that might motivate us to taking action in a relationship, uh, um, a dance of some sort. And that Mercury Uranus um, sesqui square on December 6th. Um, is followed by Mercury trining Jupiter on December 7th. So these are days of of increased communication and opening and breakthrough, and it may be exciting, and and there is an opening energy here. And the reason why I'm dwelling on this a, a bit is because when Mercury turns retrograde, it repeats in opposite order, first the trine to Jupiter, on, on December 18th, then the sesqui square to Uranus on the 19th, and then the sextile to Saturn on the 21st. And, and this is important because this begins with the big idea, Jupiter, and then it has a bit of a breakthrough and motivational piece uh, on the 19th, and then there's the reality check on the 21st. Now, that whole sequence of events repeats the third and final time on January um, 17th, 18th, and 19th, when Mercury makes the square and a half to Uranus on the 17th of January, the sextile to Saturn reality check on the 18th, and then the big idea settles in, and that would be um, you know where we take it into the future, and that's on January 19th. One other thing before I move on away from Mercury, and we'll see this again in the chart as we unfold the month um, uh, graphically uh, in a chart, but often Mercury, as I said, does this one, two, three, especially if it's making an aspect, if we have any planets in in our natal chart, uh, for example, in that shadow area, between 22 degrees of Sagittarius and 8 degrees of Capricorn, Mercury is going to conjoin it one, two, three times. And for that matter, if we have any planet at 22 degrees of any mutable sign, between 22 degrees of any mutable sign to 8.5 degrees of any cardinal sign, so that would be basically not only 22 degrees of Sagittarius to eight degrees of Capricorn, but the same degrees spread um, from Pisces to Aries, or from Gemini to Cancer, or from Virgo to Libra. And I guess it'll square or oppose each of those points also. Normally, we get the one, two, three, but with Mars, we have a peculiar thing because um, as we begin the month, Um, Mercury is already way ahead of Mars, but as it slows down, Mars moves faster than Mercury because Mercury is going backwards, retrograding. And so we have a Mercury-Mars conjunction on December 27th. And normally that conjunction happens just once every time Mercury catches up to Mars, but this time it's going to happen on the 27th, but then as Mercury turns direct, it quickly picks up speed, and we get a repeat of that a month later on January 27th. Now, what do all these mean? All these things mean that when we get these repeat things, it's the event that might feel like it's done, like whatever the misleading or or imaginative thing or the communication issues that came up either individually or globally, socially, politically. For example, when Mercury was squaring Neptune around the new moon at the end of uh, of, um, November, that is not quite finished. It's going to come back again and again, um, December 26th, then January 8th. And so it's important to understand the function of how Mercury retrograde stretches out events that normally occur at a moment, but instead now occur over a longer period of time. So having said that, let's move into the day by day through January and let's see if we can get through this effectively and efficiently. 
We are looking at the chart for December 1st. Um, and again, this is a noon chart for Redmond, Washington, or, or Seattle, but just outside of, of um, Redmond is just outside of Seattle. And so this is a chart without any uh, horizon because the horizon is dependent upon your locality. Wherever you are adjusted for time zone at noon Pacific time, that would mean that the moon has just moved into Leo. In fact, the moon moves into Leo um, uh, early in the day on Friday morning, December 1st at 8 a.m. Again, all times are Pacific time. So we have the moon in, in Leo through the day, but we also have Mercury moving into Capricorn, and that, as I mentioned earlier, happens in the morning. Um, uh, this is a period of time when our communication needs to be grounded. The interesting thing is, is that Mercury's move into Capricorn is followed almost immediately by tomorrow, December 2nd, I'll bring that chart up in a moment, um, by Mercury's sextile to, um, uh, to Saturn. So Mercury moving into Capricorn is kind of Saturnian in itself because Saturn is at home in Capricorn. And so when Mercury moves into Capricorn, we can bank a little bit more assuredly that the information we're getting is real. We're coming out of that Mercury that was square Neptune, where perhaps there were things going on that were based on illusion or hope or fantasy or deceit even. And yet now as that Mercury moves into Capricorn on the morning of the 1st, um, we can see it at uh, midday at zero degrees and uh, uh, about zero degrees, zero and a quarter degrees of Capricorn. But by midday on the second, we can see that um, it has moved to one degree and the exact sextile with Saturn occurs in the morning before noon. Sometimes the aspects that I talk about will either be not quite there or just over because we're looking at the charts for noon every day. It makes it simpler to, um, to do that. But it's important to understand that Mercury sextile to Saturn that will begin to feel on December 1st, on the 2nd, we will know that it's there. And this is about following the rules, about speaking the truth, about having integrity. Um, and so I think that this can be a very important day for communication. A couple of days. By December 3rd, um, we have the moon moving into Virgo late in the, in, in the day, about um, nearly almost 8 o'clock in the evening Pacific time. But also in the morning, we have Venus making a square with Pluto. Now, I, wa I want you to remember that we've had other planets making squares with Pluto, and they have not been easy. In fact, going back to the beginning of October, when we had Mars squaring Pluto, um, that was the eruption of the um, crisis that has unfolded um, in Israel between the um, Israeli government and, the, and, and Hamas. Um, and so I'm, and, and we've had a period of time where toward the end of November, where we had smoother, um, where we had sextiles between the sun and Mars to Pluto. And although that bit larger energy hasn't gone away, um, to many people, it's felt like there's been some progress made with ceasefire or, um, or release of hostages and, and so on. I'm not going to comment any deep, deep, more deeply on this at this point in time, but I just want to note that on December 3rd, Venus is making an exact square to Pluto again. And so we may see another round on that December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd to that, that builds to perfection um, on the morning of the 3rd. Um, we may see some of that energy kind of take a different uh, um, direction again or, um, or some deeper energy coming out. Before we leave December 3rd, we also need to note that Mars is making an exact quincunx with Jupiter the same day, not until the afternoon exact. But this, again, makes it difficult to know how much hope or how much belief we should place in something 
Uh, belief and hope are both functions of Jupiter and Sagittarius. This is Mars and Sagittarius. There's that sense that we have some optimism, but Jupiter and Taurus is moving a little bit slower. I think we still need to be convinced. Stuff is coming out here. It's not an easy um, energy, but I think it may uh, reveal another round of, uh, of events that are fitting into this larger scenario that is unfolding. And we also note that Venus, as it makes its square to um, Pluto exact on the third, by the fourth, Venus actually enters Scorpio. And, you know, we've had this intense Scorpio energy, um, but now Mars and the Sun have moved out of Scorpio um, into Sagittarius. In fact, we had, for most of um, November, we had Mercury moving through Sagittarius too. Now Mercury has moved into Capricorn, where it's more serious, but, and, 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 and the Sun and Mars in Sagittarius are more flagrantly optimistic and hopeful and looking for the greater adventure. But something is lagging now, and that is the aesthetic sense. That is our sense of values, our belief. Venus moving through, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Venus moving through um, Scorpio. Um, Venus will be in Scorpio um, uh, all, all month, and in fact, Venus um, actually, um, not all month because it moves into Sagittarius at the very end of the month, Venus actually moves into Sagittarius on December 29th. But for all practical purposes, we're more serious about what we love, about what we like, about what we're attached to um, this month than we may be at other times. And we'll begin to feel that as Venus moves into Scorpio on the, on the 4th. On the um, fifth, we still have the moon moving. The moon moved into Virgo um, uh, Sunday evening. I think I mentioned that earlier, and it stays in Virgo until Wednesday the sixth. On the fifth, we have with the moon still moving through through Virgo, um, and in fact, the moon will make a trine to Uranus um, on the fifth. But on December on December fifth, this is a Tuesday. Um, the, Venus now having entered into Scorpio, water sign, is picking up a trine uh, with, with Saturn um, at one degree, one and a half degrees now almost of, of Pisces. And so again, we get this kind of settling of making it real. There's a real fundamental return to integrity, and we may see some very serious negotiation unfolding here, um, although it's not without its difficulties. Why do I say that? Because also on December 5th, we have the sun making a half square with Pluto. Now remember, those um, squares with Pluto that the sun and Mercury made um, back in October were not uh, were, were not easy at all. And so I would expect that these half squares might stir up some more complications or difficulty or even some catastrophe. Um, it, this is, this is a not, not an easy energy at all. Um, Mercury now is also entering into that period where I had mentioned earlier, where it begins by making that um, square and a half with Uranus. That happens on, on the 6th. There's communication here that is just kind of almost unbelievable. Things are happening, um, and the pace is, is, is quicker. Um, the sun is moving into a uh, trine with Chiron. That's not exact until the 7th, but here on the 6th, we also have uh, uh, Neptune that is stationary. Uh, Neptune has been um, retrograde. Uh, Neptune uh, turned retrograde back at the end of June, um, and now it's turning direct, but again, it moves so slowly. I don't think it, its turn on today is, act, or today meaning the 6th, the chart we're looking at, I don't think this is going to be an, an, an incredibly um, potent thing itself, um, but the fact that at the same time um, we have uh, the Mercury making the square and a half with Uranus and the Sun coming into 
uh, trining Chiron and Mercury, which is um, also slowing down and getting ready to turn retrograde, is making that trine to Jupiter. I think words here can magnify things that can be overly hopeful. I think the sun's trine to Chiron, which is exact on the 7th. I'm going to move this forward to the 7th. Also note that the moon has moved into Libra. It enters Libra at 8.34 a.m. on Wednesday morning um, on, on the 6th. And as we move forward now to the 7th, we can see that the moon in mid Libra is now opposing Chiron at the same time Um, the sun is sextiling, uh, I'm sorry, the moon is sextiling the sun, and at the same time, the sun is making a trine to Chiron. I think December 7, uh, coupled with with the fact that Mercury is making a trine to Jupiter. We have some healing potential today. We have some real potential to uh, look at the bright side of things and actually make them real. Um, I think this is a very important period of time, and I'm looking for the best out of it. Um, This is on December 7th. On December 8th, the moon is still moving through Libra. Um, We have it making a square with Pluto uh, midday on the 8th on on Friday. That can stir up a little bit of or a lot of energy, but I think it'll be acute. It won't last long because we're still working on the trines. Even though they were exact yesterday, we're still working on the trine of of. Mercury to Jupiter, because Mercury's moving pretty slowly now, getting ready to turn retrograde on the 12th, just a few days away. And the sun is still making that trine to Chiron, even though it was exact on on Thursday the 7th. Um, I think, though, that we're going to still be feeling that on, on, on the 8th. We have the moon also um, moving on the 8th, later in the evening, into Scorpio at 7.34 p.m., so that by midday on the 9th, we can see that the moon is actually lining up with Venus in Scorpio and opposing uh, Jupiter. We have Venus coming into an opposition with Jupiter. That's exact this evening at about 7.34 Um, And we also have on the 9th, um, we're still seeing um, the the residual energy of those trines of both Mercury to Jupiter and the Sun to to Chiron. I still think we can get some healing energy out of this. And I think Venus's opposition to Jupiter um, might uh, encourage us to to maybe put sugar coating around whatever it is that we're seeing. It may be that things can be, you know, it's, it's like something too sweet is not good. Matter of fact, too much sugar is toxic. And so I think we have to be careful about, about overindulgence or about over, uh, over hoping. Is that a word mm-hmm. about, about putting too much hope or too much um, attention I mean, it's always good to focus on the positive potential because where our attention goes, that's where, that's where energy flows. And so I'm not saying that we should be negative. I'm saying that we should be aware of, of where we're living under the influence, like driving under the influence. And the influence is the, um, is the tyranny of hope of like, oh, I'm, I hope it'll get better and therefore I don't need to do anything today. No, we still need to do things today. We still need to work. We still need to, uh, to do whatever we can to, to make it real. Mercury still slowing down, um, um, is also uh, slowing down enough that Venus is moving <laughs> faster than Mercury, and Venus moves into the trine to, uh, to I'm sorry, the sextile to Mercury, um, and that's exact uh, on the 11th. We have the moon moving through Scorpio, um, it opposing Uranus midday on the 10th. And by the time we get to the 11th, um, Venus has already moved through that sextile um, to, um, uh, to, to Mercury. And, and I stumbled over because normally we say Mercury sextiles Venus because the faster moving planet acts on the slower moving planet. But right now, Venus is moving faster than Mercury. And so we have that energy. Again, this is communication in a, in a fashion of saying things that are easier to say 
now. And we have to be careful because we can say things that are so easy to say that maybe once we say them, we can't take them back and then the reality sets in. And also on the 11th, part of that reality is the sun is making a quincunx with Uranus. And here again, it's we can say things that sound so sweet and so simple and so pure, and yet there's another level that that sinks in that makes that quincunx kind of like abruptly change something. It's, It's we can mean something very sweet and yet and yet it can come out mean, even though we didn't mean to be mean. So that is on the uh, 11th. Um, The moon moves into Sagittarius also early in the morning on the 11th, which means that the moon will catch up with Mars and the sun over the next couple of days as it moves through Sagittarius. On, and by the way, the moon moves into Sagittarius at 3.10 a.m. on Monday the, uh, the 11th. On Tuesday the 12th, now that the moon is in Sagittarius, it'll catch up with, um, with, with Mars and it will then be a new moon. The new moon occurs at 3.32 p.m. on December 12th, on Tuesday, December 12th at... 20 degrees of Sagittarius and 40 minutes at 3.32 p.m. And, um, and although uh, this, this uh, new moon is still quincunx to Uranus, because remember the exact sun quincunx to Uranus um, was um, yesterday uh, in the evening at night, actually, on the 11th, um, we're still getting that feeling like the hopeful and the optimism and the big news of the Sagittarius energy, it's not settling very well. Um, it, there's a part of it that, that is, there's something that's entrenched, ingrained too much with Uranus in Taurus and even, um, e- you know, e- even with uh, um, Jupiter still in, you know, in Taurus also. It's like that which is settled in and determined is not feeling as good as the idea that maybe things could get better. And yet things can get better. And I think also on the 12th, we're we're also working um, with the sun making a square and a half to Jupiter. So we're motivated to reach for that golden ring. But we have to remember that if we're on that old merry-go-round, actually really reaching for the golden ring, if we reach too far, we can fall off the horse, and that's not good. Jupiter is reaching for something and making something bigger happen, but it also has a warning that if we reach too far, that we can lose our balance and not accomplish anything at all. So this is all on the 12th. Um, And of course, the other piece of this is that Mercury goes retrograde, turns retrograde on the 12th. Um, The the new moon occurs at 3.32 p.m. And technically that retrograde um, is at 11 p.m., 11.09 but it's really retrograde at the new moon. And part of the problem with this new moon is that communication is not going to take us as far as we would like it to, because as Mercury begins um, moving backward, apparently in the sky, we'll be revisiting some of the recent things that we thought were already said and done, and yet they are not. By December 13th, we have the sun um, making that exact square and a half to, um, to Jupiter that I mentioned um, uh, uh, that was already in, in, in play at the, um, at the, at the new moon. Um, but I think, again, here the tendency is to want to exaggerate. And um, we also have today, and that exaggeration um, can get us into trouble because we also have today Mars making that exact half square with Pluto. Remember, the sun made that half square with Pluto on December 5th. And so again, we're getting that deeper, uncomfortable energy, the conflict, the the eruption of the difficulties from power struggles that are coming out. And this is Wednesday the 13th, and coupled with the sun's sesquisquare to Jupiter and that tendency to over-exaggerate, we could in fact find ourselves in a bit of 
of trouble here on the 13th, especially as the moon is moving into Capricorn at 7.30 in the morning. The moon's entry into Capricorn um, means that it will be um, lining up with Mercury, which is stationary, and it'll be re-emphasizing all of that. But, you know, Mercury is backing into that trine to Jupiter that it already had. Mercury had the trine to Jupiter on December 7th, and as I mentioned before we began looking at charts, Mercury trines Jupiter on December 7th, but then on the retrograde it'll do it again on the 18th. And so we're not getting freed from this dilemma of having the solid stability and that which is, is of the Jupiter and Uranus, both in Taurus, combined with the hope and the potential of the Sun and Mars in Sagittarius and Mercury making that trine to Jupiter and Mercury even now moving backwards, heading back to Sagittarius, where again, it can become inflationary again. It's an interesting dance between wanting to make it real and yet being tempted to look at the good things and only entertain them to the extent that we may then forget about the reality that sits behind it. That's on the 13th. Um, the important thing of the day is the um, Mars making the Mars making the half square with 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 Pluto. Um, on the 14th, the moon is still moving through um, Capricorn. Um, it does make a square with Chiron. Um, it also picks up on a trine to Uranus. Um, you know, we're getting a bunch of Earth energy here for better and for worse. And I think that we're kind of having to settle into it a bit more. We have a couple of other things that are cooking in the background that'll become more important in the days ahead. One is the sun uh, on, the, on Thursday the 14th at 22 and a half degrees degrees of Sagittarius is moving toward a square to Neptune. That sun square to Neptune is exact on the 16th. This again has to do with illusion and deceit, but imagination and the brilliance of how imagination can actually create ways to move beyond the apparent restrictions of Saturn. Um, On the um, 15th, we see that the um, moon by noon on the 15th has moved into Aquarius. In fact, the moon moves into Aquarius at 9.55 a.m. on Friday the 15th, and Mars is now uh, moved slightly past that half square to Pluto, and Mars is picking up on an exact trine to Chiron. Again, the potential for healing dangles in front of us, but we have to make the move. We have to be willing even if even if intellectually we have a problem with it, we have to be willing to forgive. We have to be willing to forgive others, and we have to be willing to forgive ourselves. And we have to be willing to move beyond that, because if we can, then that Mars in Sagittarius dangles that carrot of hope in front of us, saying that if we can move beyond this, maybe there are ways in which we can heal the current situation. Now, the sun is getting closer and closer to that square to um, to Neptune. By the 16th, it is exact. The square is exact in the evening, um, but by midday, we can see that the moon at 15 degrees of Aquarius is actually... Um, rocking out with sextiles to Mars on one side and Chiron on the other because that Mars trine Chiron, which was technically um, exact yesterday in the afternoon because the moon is revisit the, the moon is making sextiles to both of those today midday, it's going to revisit that energy and maybe even amp it up giving us that ability to, if we can break through the moon in Aquarius, if we can find ways to think about social, community, uh, family, beyond our own individual fears of our own personal boundaries, this is all great potential for, um, for, for healing. And in fact, as we get to the 17th, We have the moon moving into Pisces um, midday, actually 11.58, almost almost exactly noon. The moon moving into Pisces, um, and as it does, it'll begin to pick up on the reality and the restrictions and the heaviness of Saturn just now at two degrees of Pisces. But 
we also have on the 17th Venus now moving into that quincunx to Chiron. And again, this is the awkwardness and the irritation of how our values may not be meshing and it's hard to forgive and forget, or maybe it's to forgive and not to forget. Um, But that Venus um, quincunx to Chiron, I think really kind of becomes a niggling factor that makes it difficult to move on. Nevertheless, there still is good news because remember, we're back to that Mercury, which is now retrograding. We talked about Mercury's Um, retrograde um, to uh, Jupiter back on the 7th, and now retrograde Mercury is backing into its trine again um, on the um, 18th to Jupiter. We see the moon moving through Pisces, but we have this hope that it's like the hope doesn't go away even when things are are difficult. It's really kind of an interesting uh, dilemma, uh, a dilemma simply being pulled in two directions, two different directions to truth, which uh, is sometimes, which should be always irresolvable. But our resolution here goes back to Jupiter. It goes back to um, even the Mars and the Sun in Sagittarius. It goes to the hope. It goes to now even the moon in um, in Pisces moving toward its conjunction to Neptune, it has to do with how we can dissolve the, the boundaries that we thought were so important, and they may have been, but we need to dissolve boundaries to make things, um, all boundaries are temporary, and we have to figure out ways to, while the moon is moving through um Uh, through uh, Pisces, and even part of the larger picture of Saturn being in Pisces for a couple of years, we have to learn how to make boundaries as they soften and as they they shift. So that is the 18th, and we get that Mercury trine Jupiter um, exact again um, early in the morning. Um, On the 19th, We have the moon moving into Aries that occurs just after noon. So if we're looking at the chart on the 19th, we still see the moon in Pisces. But the moon does move into um, Aries um, at 2.46 p.m. on the 19th. And we also have Mercury now retrograding back into the sesquisquare uh, to Jupiter. That rem- that's reminiscent of the um, Mercury sesquisquare. I'm sorry, Mercury sesquisquare Uranus. It was trine Jupiter sesquisquare Uranus. Both are expansive, but the sesquisquare to Uranus is a bit more abrupt. We also have on the um, on the twentieth, we have the moon now in Aries. Um, moving toward its conjunction with Chiron, but we also have um, Venus now making that half square with Mercury. I mentioned this um, uh, earlier before the charts are up, but this is kind of um, strange because um, Venus is moving faster than Mercury, and so Venus moves through that. um, It's exact early in the morning on Uh, Wednesday the 20th. Um, We have the moon continuing to move through Aries. We also have Venus coming into an opposition um, um, with Uranus that's exact today on the 20th. That's not exact until 11.04 p.m. That's again Pacific time. So that actually means that it would be very early in the morning on the 21st on the on the East Coast. But that Venus opposing Uranus can be very exciting on one hand, and it can also be a bit disruptive. Because when Venus opposes Uranus, we're ready to reach outside the box. We're, we, we, we're attracted to those things. Venus is in Scorpio. We're only attracted to things that have deep and powerful personal meaning now. And yet, as Venus reaches outside of the box as it opposes Uranus, we may be confronted with things that open our mind or shatter our belief systems based upon what we thought 
thought we liked or based upon what we thought our limitations were. Now, remember, when Venus and Uranus are making a connection, it doesn't mean we should act on every feeling that we have, but it's also important to be aware of it and to use these opportunities to explore what thinking outside of the box or feeling uh, attractions and desires outside of the box might actually mean. That's all on December on December 20th. We're also coming very close to the um, autumnal, I'm sorry, the winter solstice uh, here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, that's the summer solstice down below the equator. Um, and that occurs on the 21st. Um, on the 21st, it, it occurs um, at 7.27 p.m. So at the noon chart, it, it, it's still showing with the sun at 29 degrees of Sagittarius. But what we're coming into is a conjunction of the retrograde Mercury conjoining up with the sun. That won't be exact until tomorrow, the 22nd. We'll see that in just a moment. But the solstice itself is a turning point because it's, it's, it's like this is... Um, the sun at its lowest in the sky at high noon um, in the northern hemisphere. And this begins the sun's journey back up into the north. Um, it's the first day of winter, but it's actually the beginning of the returning of the light. Um, and what we also have on the um, 21st, we also have um, Mars making that exact quincunx with Uranus. Um, and this is, again is disruptive. It feels like our moving towards our, our um, goals, our, our long-term futuristic goals in some ways are upsetting the apple cart because even though Uranus can be dramatic and drastic and sudden change, in, Ur in, in, in Taurus, Uranus doesn't like to change that much that fast because Taurus likes to hold on to, um, to, uh, to what it has. Now, also on the 21st, we have in the evening at 6.50 p.m., we have the moon moving out of Aries and into Taurus, where on the 22nd, um, the moon will line up with Jupiter and then eventually reach its alignment with Uranus um, to the, the following day. But here on the 21st, um, I think the order of business is that this is the winter solstice and that the sun and Mercury are coming very close together. Remember, this is a retrograde Mercury. So the, the so Mercury is between the Earth and the Sun, which means that although our intellect, our thinking, is lined up with our willpower, the Sun, it's hard to get it out into the open, especially since as that moment of the solstice, the sun moves into Capricorn and Mercury, which is retrograding back into Sagittarius, where it really wants to get those ideas out while it's lined up with the sun, it knows better. It has to hold it in to make it real, to make it last, to make it long term. And here on the 22nd, we can see that the moon has already made that conjunction with Jupiter. Um, and on the 22nd, um, the exact sun conjunction um, with Mercury occurs at 10.53 a.m. Um, and so by noon, as this chart is, you can see Mercury is already passed, backed up past the sun, heading back towards Sagittarius, where it will reach later in the day um, by 10.15, 10 10.17 10 actually. Um, this evening on Friday, um, Mercury will be back in Sagittarius, um, where it will remain all the way through mid-January when it's after it's turned direct and it will go back into Capricorn on January 13th. This inflates the, what we're saying again. It gives us hope. It gives us a, a way above whatever the limitations are that we've been facing. And also on the 22nd, we also have Mars now making that exact square and a half with Jupiter. And, um, you know, and, and again, when Mars connects up with Jupiter this way, it's overinflated. It wants to take on, we're motivated to push too far. And pushing too far, I mean, in an athletic match, it can be like the difference that makes a, a touchdown or, or a win. But it also has with it within it the danger. And the danger is that if 
we push too far, if we reach too far, we can overextend ourselves and end up falling on our face and not getting anything out of it that we had hoped or that we had wanted to. And so we have this ongoing, um, it's not a battle, it's a dance, it's an engagement between, I want to say, between Jupiter and Saturn, although, you know, um, we haven't talked much about Saturn, even though as the sun moves into Capricorn, it begins to pick up on that sextile to Saturn. Um, in fact, we had talked earlier about um, ab- about Mercury's sextile to Saturn, um, which is on the 21st. That's one of those repeating things that we talked about earlier because Mercury had a reality check on December 2nd as it made a sextile to Saturn. Then again, on the 21st, which goes along with the solstice, um, sextile Saturn again, reality check, um, even though it's on its way back into Sagittarius, where it's going to be more hopeful. But meanwhile, the sun moving from Sagittarius into Capricorn is coming toward this, towards its sextile um, with Saturn. That's not exact until the 24th. But we're seeing this dance between between restrictive, um, uh, traditional, authoritative Saturn and the hope and the potential and the big news and the big ideas of Jupiter. And it's a theme all month of this kind of push-pull, push-pull energy. So that is on the um, on the twenty second um, with um, with the moon now moving through Taurus. By the 23rd, we can see midday that the moon is just past its conjunction with Uranus. It would have happened mid-morning, um, you know, about 8 a.m. actually, give or take a little bit. Um, that's on Saturday the uh, 23rd. Um, and on the 24th, we get the sun, which we can see even on the 23rd, moving closer to that sextile to Saturn. By the 24th, the sun is exactly sextile Saturn. And on the 24th, Sunday the 24th, we have the moon moving into Gemini just as the day begins at 12.14 a.m. Pacific time. Um, And so we're getting the heaviness, the weight of the sun in Capricorn, sextiling its uh, ruling planet in Pisces, Saturn. And at the same time, we're still thinking that we can think our way out of this because the moon moves into Gemini and we may be a little bit separated or detached from the weight. Maybe for many people, it may be the celebration of the um, Christmas holiday, Um, but it can be a number of different things. But our minds are really working and traveling as the moon is now moving through Gemini on the 24th. And also notice how close Venus is in its trine to Neptune. Um, It's exact on Christmas, uh, uh, on the 25th. Um, And the trine between Venus and Neptune is a lovely, wonderful, beautiful trine that can create its own bit of trouble. It's not as sudden and as breakthrough crazy as its opposition to Uranus was. Um, That was back on December 20th. Its trine to Neptune is dreamy. It's beautiful. We see we see beauty in everything and anything, even when it's not there. We have um, the moon moving through its opposition um, to um, Mars and Mercury as the moon in Gemini moves towards the full moon. Um, That full moon is exact um, in the afternoon of the 26th on Tuesday. We'll get there in a moment. But here on on the 25th, that Venus trine Neptune is, I think, the most important thing in the sky because we can just zone out on what it is that's lovely. Um, We do have, however, retrograde Mercury still backing into its square to Neptune. And remember, that was the one that was exact uh, around the new moon um, back, uh, uh, it was exact on, on November 27th. And now approaching the full moon, uh, (laughs) Mercury again, is square Neptune. So Neptune is in the high focus here. On one hand, what we're saying is not necessarily accurate. We're telling good stories. 
but we're loving it because Venus is trying to Neptune is putting this this gloss of of sugar sugar plum fairies dancing in our dreams even if we're talking about them we know it's not true but it doesn't matter on some level that moon in Gemini is allowing allowing us to hold these two different positions knowing that only half of them are are true um, very strong very powerful couple days here um, and as we move to the 26th, we um, see that the moon has moved into Cancer. Uh, the moon enters Cancer in the morning at 7.15 a.m. on Tuesday, the 26th. And also, um, we have the sun making its retro, um, uh, the sun making its square and a half to Uranus. Um, and, and intriguingly enough, this is right approaching the full moon. Uh, the moon moves into um, cancer. Um, at, at what time did I say the moon moves into cancer um, at 7.15 a.m. and it's full at 4.33 p.m. So it's it, it all happens pretty pretty quickly and in the midst of all of that as the moon is moving into um, as the moon is moving into cancer um, it is also applying to a half square to Uranus while the sun is making a square and a half to Uranus. And so it's, it's interesting that, that both of those are occurring, which means that this full moon is actually creating an opposition that Uranus is stimulating um, from that point of Thor, that's half square one side of the opposition of the moon to the sun and square and a half to the other. So we can expect some sudden disruptions and some craziness, some things that we didn't expect. And yet at the same time, the, the uh, Jupiter is still being trined by the sun because the sun is coming into the trine to Jupiter and the moon is also coming into the sextile to Jupiter. And so we get this full moon that has... Um, Uranus at the point of Thor, disrupting the energy of the full moon. We have Jupiter at the point of Thales, making a, um, a, a semi, making a sextile to the lunar side of the opposition and a trine to the solar side of the opposition. And we also have Saturn making a sextile um, to the sun side and a trine to the to the moon side. You know, we have Saturn coming into a sextile to Jupiter. That's not exact until um, until next month. Um, but the Saturn Saturn sextile Jupiter is still like what two and a half degrees away from being exact, even though Saturn is moving direct toward it. And we can see that at this full moon, we're getting kind of this sextile bowl from the sun to Saturn to Jupiter back to the moon. And I think this should help ease the energy a bit, even though um, Mercury is squaring Neptune and Mars is coming into a square to Neptune. And I think that can be a little bit more disruptive um, and we will get there in a moment. This is a very powerful full moon. I mean, the full moon in Cancer wants us to protect our security and stay home. The full moon, actually, as it moves into Cancer on the 26th, trining Saturn, it's the reality of, of knowing what our boundaries are. Um, and, and it's the self and the internal and the family and the feelings, the moon in Cancer, being opposed by what's out there, um, the structures in the in, in the Saturnian world and with Saturn at that point of Thales, I think that this is a pretty stable uh, time and yet we have to be careful about acting on things that are not truths. That's the Mercury squaring um, Neptune and Mars coming into the square to Neptune and the Uranus still creating a bit of that disruption all on the 26th. Um, on the 26th, we also have Chiron, which is stationary direct. 
Remember, Chiron had turned retrograde back at the end of July. It's now stationary. It's not moving very fast. In fact, it's not moving at all right now. It'll take a while for it to pick up speed, but it just again emphasizes how important these days are around Christmas, especially as the sun continues to move into that trine to Jupiter that is exact on the uh, 27th. And we can see here on the 27th, midday that the sun is very close to making that trine to Jupiter. It's technically exact at 728 in the morning, but this will be with us all all day and even for a day or two. And on top of that, we now have Mars moving faster than Mercury, catching up to Mercury, Mercury being moving uh, retrograde. And we have a Mercury uh, conjoined Mars. And so we can here speak with a bit more anger than we intend. This has been on us for a couple of days, especially as both of them are squaring Neptune. These are words that can incite someone either to conflict or to peace, <laughs> but they can be misleading in either case. And with the sun trining Jupiter, there's that sense of wanting to make it better, wanting to, we're reaching for the, um, the maybe it's the end of the year and we're reaching for the hope that 2024 will give us those things that perhaps 2023 um, did did not. Um, that's on the uh, 27th. On the 28th, we have the uh, moon moving out of Cancer a little bit later in the day into Leo at 4.23 p.m. And also on the 28th, prior to the moon changing signs, the moon is going to make a grand water trine as it picks up on first a trine to Neptune before noon. And then just afternoon, it'll pick up on that trine. Again, that's Pacific time. And then just afternoon, it'll pick up on the trine to Venus. Even though Venus has passed its exact trine to Neptune, uh, remember um, that Venus-Neptune trine occurred on the 20th. 25th, by the 28th, as the moon is moving through those two points, it's going to re-emphasize that, and the moon will also move through its opposition to Pluto um, just afternoon before changing signs um, uh, on Thursday before moving into Leo. And that again, that movement into Leo is 4.23 p.m. And I think that kind of frees up the energy. It shifts things, and it moves things around so that I think that by the time, um, even though we have some other, we have Venus making um, a a sextile with Pluto um, as the moon is changing signs still just before the moon changes signs into Leo, we have Venus at the point of Thales of the moon's opposition to Pluto. And I think this is a sweet energy, but we still got to be careful about um, about deceit, about lying, about misleading, about using our imagination um, to change the name of the game in a way that it's not quite for real as Mercury and Mars um, are are both squaring squaring Neptune. This is all on the 28th. Also, we can see that Venus at the very, very end of Scorpio by the 29th, actually just moments after noon at 1230, um, it moves into um, Sagittarius, but here it still shows at 29 degrees and just 29, 59 minutes um, of Scorpio. Um, and this um, is, a, is also a, a huge shift because when Venus moves into Sagittarius, Again, our hopes are elevated. And now for a brief moment of time, we have Venus and Mars and retrograde Mercury having backed into Sagittarius. And even though we're dealing with reality, we have our hopes that are really, really up there um, and out there. And I think that all of this is, um, is, is significant. It's all important. That's on the 29th. Uh, on the 29th, also, Venus makes a square and a half to Chiron. Um, it, that, I think, exacerbates whatever the learning or teaching is. If, if we learn something now because of going deep as Venus makes the sextile to, to uh, Pluto, uh, if we learn something, it probably won't be all that comfortable because that Venus uh, square and a half or sesqui square to Chiron is not necessarily comfortable. 
That's on Thursday, the 20, uh, that's on Friday, the 29th. Um, and um, by the 30th, we can see that the moon is still in Leo. It's picking up by mid-afternoon trines to, um, uh, to Mercury and Mars. And you can see that by the 30th, Mars is, the, the distance between Mercury and Mars is increasing, but it's Mars that's moving fast away um, from Sagittarius toward Capricorn and Mercury moving backwards deeper into Sagittarius realms. Um, and that's all, I, I think, Im important, um, but there's not a lot. I mean, these are almost quieter days. Venus also, as it moves into Sagittarius, is picking up on that square to Saturn, um, even though that square is not exact until um, January. Um, I, I, I think it becomes um, exact on January 1st. Um, but it, it, it's almost like the year ends, there's a sense of hope, but there's also a sense of real seriousness as Saturn squares, as, as Venus squares Saturn, we realize that we're not going to just be able to happy talk our way into the future. Um, and, and yet also on the 30th, uh, Jupiter is stationary. It, it stopped, it, it, Jupiter had turned retrograde, um, back on uh, back in, uh, September 4th, and now Jupiter turns direct on this next to last day of the month on December 30th. Um, and, and it'll take a bit of time for it to get going, but by January, um, we have all the outer planets except for Uranus now moving direct. Uranus, of course, turns direct on January 26th, but we still have Mercury retrograde. And, and it's important to understand that as we step into 2024, we're not convinced that it's going to get better or change really quickly. And on some levels, we're right. But the deeper change is there. And in fact, the, the, um, the moon moves into Virgo um, early in the morning on Sunday, the 31st. Um, and as it does, the moon, um, it, it moves into Virgo at 3.53 a.m. Pacific time on December 30, 31st on Sunday. But as it does, it will immediately pick up on that square to Venus and the opposition to Saturn. Um, and also, as the moon is opposing Saturn, <clears throat> it's going to also pick up on a trine to Jupiter. Again, for the last time of 2023, kind of highlighting this dance between um, having to deal with reality, constriction, fundamentalism, um, tradition, holding things as they are, the status quo, all Saturn, and Jupiter in Taurus now turning direct, beginning to move forward again, but not very fast. Jupiter will get its own as it continues to move through Taurus. Jupiter will, in fact, day by day um, gain speed. And as I had mentioned earlier, by the end of the month, Jupiter is at seven and a half, at the end of January, uh, Jupiter's at seven and a quarter degrees of Taurus. Um, by the end of February, it's at 11 degrees of Taurus. By the end of March, it's at 17 degrees of Taurus. And by the end of May, it's in Gemini. And so we're going to see some really potent, powerful movement um, because we'll, we'll have all the outer planets moving direct and even Mercury, which will turn direct, as I had mentioned earlier, um, Mercury turns direct in um, mid-January. Actually, it um, turns uh, direct on January, uh, what did I say, on January 1st, it turns direct. So it's the month of the month of December is really a paradox. What's that saying? It's an enigma, a statement. It's it's an enigma within an enigma, because we're getting hints and clues of how we're going to be moving forward, and yet we're not. And Mercury is like review, review, see it again, revision it. What we thought wasn't the way it was. Now we need to go back again. We need to we need to reconsider. We need to um, all the re words with with um, with Mercury covered 
recovering ter- recovering old um, information, revisiting old places, um, re- reminiscing, remembering. All these are Mercury retrograde words. And yet 2024 begins with Mercury turning direct on the first of the of, of the year. And and it's like, I think 2024 is a launch pad year. Um, and again, uh, I will uh, talk more about an overview of 2024 when I do the January forecast that I will be doing from India. Um, it, 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 December is a crazy month and it's a rock and roll month. And, and yet I think we have to keep in mind the sense of patience in dealing with issues that we know we can see what it is that's going on. It almost feels like we know that that the truth has to come out. We know that things are going to make sense, and yet they don't, and they take time, and that's frustrating as hell. And I think that acting out of frustration is the worst thing that we can do. I think it's really important to keep our eyes on the distant goal while doing what we can day by day by day to make the lives of those around us better one at a time. It's, um, as Jung would have said, the salvation of the world is not going to happen by people making treaties and, and global politics. Ultimately, the salvation of the world depends upon the salvation and the awareness of each individual living within the world. It's up to each of us to do our shadow work and to then uh, change our immediate surroundings by acting in ways that come from, from compassion, from kindness, from awareness, and from our heart. So, uh, I say to all of you, as we move into this uh, season of of the end of the year, the ultimate month of 2023, the uh, the the tinglings and tastings of what may be around the corner in 2024. To yes, as always, think cosmically, but act locally. I'm Rick Levine, and may peace be with all of us. <laughs>